Hello, everybody. Um, so today is Tuesday, and yesterday you took a progress check on application problems and using factoring to solve. What we're going to do today is start our last unit for the year. So if you look here, we're going to finish the year with radicals. Um, we're going to simplify the radicals. We're going to add and subtract them. We're going to multiply them, divide, and then finally solve radical equations. So this should take us to the end of May. And if you're on pace with us, your last day then will be when you take the test on Friday, May 27th. If you um, get behind, then you'll have another week to get that finished. Okay, so what I want you to have in front of you is this warm-up sheet that you should have printed. All right, so as far as our warm-up goes, um, it says, which of the following rules are true? Determine this by working on an example with real numbers and defining it as true or false. So can we add a radical plus a radical and then just put it underneath the radical and simplify there? Would that work? Can I do the same thing with subtracting? How about with multiplying and how about with dividing? So whenever you want to see if something's true, one of the methods you could use is to make up numbers and input them into, substitute them into for the variables and see if it actually does work out or not. Because we're taking square roots, definitely pick uh, exam uh, numbers that you know have a square root. You wouldn't want to do so, like put in a five there and go, all right, what's the square root of five and have to grab your calculator. All right, so pause the video. I want you to Finish this warm up on your own and then answer the question Is it true that that works or is it false? All right, so for our first one with adding, if I make up uh, x to be 16 and y to be 9, if I take the square root of 16 plus the square root of 9, does that equal the square root of 16 plus 9? Well, the square root of 16, you guys know, is 4. The square root of 9 is 3, so we have 7 over here. 16 plus 9 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So those do not work. So you are not allowed to add two radicals together and just place them underneath one radical. So this one will be false. All right. How about when you tried subtraction? Square root of 25 minus the square root of 36. Does that equal 25 minus 36? Well, the square root of 5, 25, sorry, is 5. Square root of 36 is 6, which will get us negative 1. 25 minus 36 is negative 11. Try putting that into your calculator. You should get an error message because that's, you can't take the square root of a negative. Uh, in Algebra 2, you'll learn that you can with an imaginary number, but that does not equal. So for subtraction, it is also false. How about multiplication? Square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Well, square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 4 is 2. And when I multiply those, I get 6. And here, when I take 9 times 4, I get 36 which is 6. So that one seems to work out. We have found an example where that does work. All right, how about um, subtracting, or sorry, dividing? So if I take the square root of 64 divided by the square root of 16, the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 16 is 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2. How about when I go to the other side of the equation, 64 divided by 16, if I put that all underneath one radical and divide that, 64 divided by 16 is 4. Well, we know the square root of 4 is 2. So this one also seems to be true. So I will be, over the next couple of videos, referring back to this warm-up. Uh, you can't just add and subtract radicals um, and just put them underneath the same radical sign, but we can multiply them together underneath the radical sign and divide them. 
All right, so knowing that, let's move on to how you simplify radicals. So, let's see. That's my notes. Here's your notes. Not worksheet. Where do I have your notes? All right, finally. Okay, so here's the note sheet that I want in front of you. Um, pause the video, and I want you to just think to yourself, what is the square root of 81? Write down your answer. Can you do this? Can you do that? And can you do that? All right, well, when you take the square root of 81, you guys know the square root of 81. That is 9. The mistake some kids will make is I will see them write that that the square root of 9, which then is 3. The square root of 81 is not the square root of 9. It is 9. The square root of 144 is 12. And then we multiply it by the negative or the negative 1 in front. So it's negative 12 there. The square root of 225 is 15. And the square root of 625 is 25. So these all work out really nicely. When they work out nicely, they are called perfect squares. So these are all examples of perfect squares, numbers that have a square root. But what if it's not a perfect square? Okay, so when you look down below, square root of 18, what if it's not a perfect square? Well, what will happen usually is kids will go to their calculator and if you have, so find the square root button. On the graphing calculator, it's right here. It's a second button. So I'm going to have to take the square root of 18, hit enter. And we're going to get roughly a 4.24. So it's about 4.24. And same with uh, square root of 24. If I find my square root button right there and go second square root, 24, I get 4.89 or basically about a 4.9 if I do some rounding. Okay. All right. So for all of these, none of them are perfect squares. There is no square root of 40, square root of 108. The problem is in math, you're not allowed to just go, oh, it's about 4.24. You need to be exact. We want to know exactly what is it equal. So we're going to end up with answers, actually, that still have radicals in them. Okay, now, uh, the first thing I have over here is the list of perfect squares. So how, how well do you guys know your square roots? Um, I mean, the square root of 1 is 1. Um, we don't need that. but how do I get 2? Well, that's the square root of 4. Okay. How do I get 3? Well, that's the square root of 9. Okay. So can you complete this all the way up to, I don't know, 12, 9, 10, 11, 12 off my paper? Square root of 16. Square root of 25. 6 times 6 is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. 9 times 9 is 81. 10 times 10 is 100. 11 times 11, 121. And 12 times 12 is 144. And we could keep going and keep going. All right, now when you are somebody who, if we get a, a problem like, well, for example, let's do the one right above it, number five, 192. We already said that we can, uh, the multiplication works, that we can multiply numbers underneath the radical, and it's the same as separating the numbers. So what you could do is think about, all right, 192. 
what goes in the 192 over here? Well, definitely, right? 121 doesn't go into 192. 100 doesn't. Mm, 192, is it divisible by 81? Nope. So then I go to 64. Is 192 divisible by 64? Oh, yes, it is. If you look on the calculator, 192, if I divide that by 64, is 3. So when I go up here to 192, that is the same thing as 64 times 3, which is the same thing as square root of 64 times the square root of 3. So we're undoing what we saw in our warm-up. Square root of 64 is 8. There is no square root of 3. So it's going to be 8 square root of 3, or 8 radical 3. It's really easy to check your answers here. Um, can I put this right here? If I take the square root of 192, I get 13.856. Okay. If I go 8 times the square root of 3 and hit enter, I better get the exact same answer. And I do. So my square root of 192, I simplified that radical into 8 radical 3. Okay, now the problem is a lot of students are not good at coming up with what numbers to put here. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll pick numbers that still can be broken down. Like um, I will have kids maybe do this. 192. If you went to your calculator and did 192 divided by 4, well, 4 works. It's 4 times 48. Okay, so square root of 4 times the square root of 48, and then square root of 4 is 2, and we think we're done. The problem is square root of 48 has more perfect squares in it. I know that 16 goes into 48. So now I have to keep going and think, all right, that would be 2 times the square root of 16 times radical 3. 2 times the square root of 16, so 2 times 4. And then finally, 2 times 4 would get us the 8 radical 3. Now you have to be good at knowing what your perfect squares are and making sure you pick the largest one. There's a process though that you can do using a factor tree and this is, I would say, the method 99% of students end up using, okay? So here's how you use the factor tree. If I start with 192, my radical, I wanna write down all the factors that go into the square root of 192 or 192. So right away it's even, so I know the square root of two times, let me grab my calculator here. So 192 divided by two gets me 96. Well, 96 can also be divided by two, 48. So this will become radical two, radical 48. 48 can be divided by 2. 24. 24 can be divided by 2. And I keep going until I can't take out any, divide anything else into the numbers. Okay. All right. Sorry. So I show you that. All right, now what's going to happen here is um, I'm going to look for pairs because the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, remember the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 from our warm-up said we can put them underneath the same radical, which would get me radical 4. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which equals 2. So when I find a pair 
I know that that's going to simplify then to a 2. Here's another pair. If I multiply these two together, they will also simplify to, four, to 2, the square root of 4, which is 2. And same deal with this one, 2. Look at what's left over. This did not get multiplied by anything, so it stays underneath the radical. So what you're going to do is go 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, radical 3. Definitely looks longer than what we did up above. However, like I said, 99% of the time students will go to this method. Now, the thing about the factor tree is it's no fun to write all these radicals. So when you're finding 192, I would say most kids do not show all these radicals. They keep in mind that in the back of their mind, they know they're working with radicals. But I will see this happening. And to save on uh, writing it all out, as long as you know it's a radical, You're going to do the exact same thing, but just know this truly means square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is the square root of 4, so I'll have a 2. Okay? All right, so let's flip it over. You can see i got lots of practice for you on the back side. Okay? So let's try a couple of these. We're not going to do all of them. Um, we'll try a couple together here. But starting with the 100, and, or sorry, 45. Think to yourself, what goes into 45? Well, 2 doesn't. I don't know if 3 does. I do know 9, or nine times 5. Okay. Nothing else goes into 5, but 9 can be broken down into a 3 and a 3. And now we have shown all the factors, right? We're looking for pairs because this truly is the square root of 5, square root of 3, square root of 3. So here is a pair. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is 3. So I will have 3. This 5, which is really the radical 5, did not pair up with anything. So I will still have square root of 5 underneath my radical. Okay. So when I go to the calculator, which I want you to always do, square root of 45, the original problem, is 6.7 roughly. 3 times radical 5 is 6.7. So we have simplified it correctly. You know you're all done when you look at this radical and you can't take any more perfect squares out of there. Okay, let's try 76. Well, I don't, I'm not real familiar with 76, but if I go to my calculator, I do know 2 goes into it. And 76 divided by 2 is 38. Well, I can still even number. I can take a 2 out. 19. 19 is a prime number. Nothing goes into 19. So I circle this pair, and I think, all right, truly, that's square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is square root of 4 which is 2. So I will have a 2 on the outside and a square root of 19 remaining on the inside. And you can check, let's see here, square root of 76 whoops, is 8.7. 2 times the square root of 19 is also 8.7. Okay, I want you to pause the video and try 3, 4, 5, and 6 on your own. Okay, looking at 3. I can tell 3 goes in there. 3 and 33. 3 goes in the 33. 3 times 11. And when I circle, I do have a pair. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is 3. And I still have a radical 11 on the outside. Or, sorry, underneath the radical on the inside. Okay. 98. 2 goes in there 49 times. 
49 is 7 times 7. Nothing else goes into that. There's my pair. So I have 7 square root of 2. Fifty. Two times twenty-five, and a five and a five. I circle my pair, so the pairs go on the outside. Five, square root of two. All right, and then sixty-eight. Um, two goes in there thirty-four times. Thirty-four divisible divided by two is seventeen. Seventeen is a prime number. So 2 squared is 17. Okay, those aren't too bad. Um, let's try um, a couple that. Try number 8 and number 9 for me. Let's see what you guys get for 8 and 9 on your own. And then let's come back together here. Okay, square root of 96 I know does not have a square root. So I'm going to do a tree to figure out what goes into 96. Well, right away I know two does, so two times 48. 48 is two times 24, two times 12, two times six, and two times three. So I look for pairs. This is square root of 4, really, or 2. Same here. And these two did not match up with anything. So this 2 times 2 is 4. The items that are numbers that did not, the prime numbers, we multiply together and they stay underneath the radical. For whatever reason, it really bothers students sometimes they have an even number in there. They want to take another 2 out, but there is no square root of 6, so that's as far as we can go. But let me show you one other way you could have done that one. Some of you guys might have done it differently. 96. If you got to here and went 2 times 48 and then realized, you know what, instead of taking out a 2, you went with a 3 times 16. 16 is 4 times 4. Notice what happens. I could keep going and get a 2 and a 2 for each of these. But as soon as you come across a pair, you can stop. Because this is the square root of 16, which is 4. And notice I have a 4 out front. And then what's remaining is this 2 and that 3. Okay. That's going to come into play in my next one. If I take out a 2 here, I get 2 times 36. Now, if you're, if you're not comfortable with knowing what are perfect squares, you might then go 2 times 18. But if you're like, oh, I know the square root of 36 is 6 times 6, you can actually stop here because I have a pair of 6s. This is left over. It did not have a, um, a pair. So 6 radical 2. All right, um, I just want to show you, let's just do two more. Let's go to the bottom and try 22 and 23. So pause the video and try 22 and 23. Okay, now when you do 22, here's something that... Um, you might go ahead and just start doing all of your factors of 2, right? So, and you're like, all right, 1,024 divided by 2 is 512. Uh, 512 divided by 2, 256. 256 divided by 2 is 128. 128 divided by 2 is 64. Ooh, 64, I'm familiar with. 8 times 8. Okay. So I have a pair of 8s. I have a pair of 2s. And look, at I have another pair of 2s. There's nothing that isn't paired up. So you're going to go 2 times 2 is 4. 
times 8 is 32. And there's nothing to put underneath a radical, so we don't have to have a radical here. Which leads me to believe this is a perfect square. So check it. Square root of 1024 is 32. We didn't even need to go through all that effort. If we would have checked it ahead of time, we would have seen that it was 32. So now that you're learning radicals, you don't, don't think you have to have a radical in every single problem. Okay. All right, last one. Uh, 162. If I take 2 out, I have 81, and I hope you recognize that right away. Don't keep going and go, no, I'm going to take out a 3 and then another 3. That's 9 times 9. We can stop there because there's a pair, and I will have 9. There's a 2 left over, radical 2. And I want you to always check your answers. So the square root of 162 is 12.73. 9 times the square root of 2, also 12.73. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there with the notes. Go ahead and take a look at what I'm assigning you for tonight to try practicing some of these on your own.